Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the afternoon session here on Table 1. It's Group 6, Championship League of 2018. And this match features not one player out there at the arena at the moment. Here's the second one, yeah. It's Graham Dodd against Michael White. Scotland against Wales. By the way, the morning session of Table 2 is still underway. Ricky Walden holding a 2-1 lead over Ben Wollaston, so the afternoon there will be slightly delayed. No delay here, mind you. And Graham Dot wasn't unduly delayed in making a winning start to the group. He beat Martin Gould 3-1 on table two this morning, so things looking good for him. Not so Michael White, who missed a whole lot of balls and made a whole lot of mistakes in losing 3-0 in his first match on this table against Lee Hang. It's been a really good career for Graham Dot. Any career that is highlighted by winning the World Championship has to be regarded as very good. Four. Coming up to the 12th anniversary of that triumph in 2006. Five. His other world ranking success was the 2007 China Open. We were talking about that this morning, actually. He played brilliantly to capture that title. What we were laughing about, actually, backstage, was how much Dot won for winning the China Open that year in 2007. Neither of us were quite sure, but what we knew, it was dwarfed by what the winner is going to receive this year. 23. £225,000 the winner will receive in early April. 24. The players, by the way, have been informed as to who they meet in the qualifying competition, which takes place at Barnsley on Saturday, Sunday, Monday and Tuesday coming up. And if you win your first match and get to the last 64, you're on £5,000. So this for Dot and for the rest of the players in the group, really good practice ahead of what is a, a really important match up in Barnsley. They all want to be involved in the, the Beijing dogfight for all of those pounds and all of those world ranking points. Grimlock 31.
It was a very disappointing introduction to the group for Michael White earlier on. Lee Hang made a century in the first frame after Michael had missed a really easy red with the rest. The most disappointing aspect of the lot in frame three, White needed only blue and pink to win it. And in trying to just float in the blue at quiet pace to hold for the pink, he actually left the blue on target but short of the pocket and appreciably short as well. So White on the back foot already. As Dot plays that intentional miscue off the, the extreme edge of the tip. He's left a touching ball here actually. with the pack so tightly bunched. There was never any real r likelihood that Dot was going to leave anything there. Well, if White takes this one on. Good luck. Well, how about that? He did leave a red and queuing down on the White White was able to avoid any semblance of a push. And that's a friendly kiss. Yes, when Dot went off the, the side cushion into the bunch, he never envisaged he could possibly leave a red. No. When White was playing this morning, I attributed the shootout to him, which he won, but I said it was part of his world ranking event portfolio. Well, of course, back then when he won the shootout, it wasn't a ranking title. But he has won the Indian Open. He has won the Paul Hunter Classic, so... 24. He's in that elite group of players who've won not just one, but multiple world ranking tournaments. 25. Thirty-two. Thirty-nine. The Ricky Walden Ben Wollaston match over on table two is over. The first Fourth. session of the day on table two is over also. I can tell you that Ricky Walden prevailed there, 3-1. Oh, he's got it. So after the table is brushed and ironed, the afternoon session will begin almost immediately. Wollaston remains on that table to take on Martin Gould. 47.
53. 54. White was appreciably below the norm. Not even his best in his first match, but this is much more encouraging. 59. by potting the green not enough to make a century 63. but the most important thing for white was to just trickle this red in its frame ball 64 79 Thanks, Thank you. 74 Well it wasn't all white this morning, far from it well. Michael White, 74, Graham got four. And despite that in off, which matters not, it's looking a little bit better for the Welshman at the start of the afternoon. 74 break, got the cue arm going, and it's given Michael White a 1-0 lead over Graham Dot. So this group six, seven players, as always, the format, they all play each other in a round-robin competition. 21 matches over the best of five frames, all of them. The top four players in the group at the end of the round-robin phase will contest the semi-final playoffs at 6 o'clock tomorrow night. The semi-finals, best of five, so too the final. Also, if you finish fifth in the group... The consolation there is that although you miss out on the knockout phase, you will be protected and go through to play in Group 7, which takes place here in late March. As for the players who finish 6th and 7th in the group, well, I'm afraid they are eliminated. You might be wondering who is coming in in Group 7 in late March. Well, three very good additions. John Higgins, the defending Championship League winner and four-time world champion, by the way. He's one of them. Luca Bussell, who won this year's or this season's China Championship. And one of the fastest players you're ever likely to see, Rob Milkins. And one of them will be filled here tomorrow night. Well, that was hit all askew. Well, what a fluke. 
What a fluke. Now, is it really worth it to take on the green? Well, the reds spread nestling in behind the green might be even more valuable. Michael White won. White shows his appreciation. But just looking to see whether the red might pot. From here it looks as though he can't quite see enough of it. No good, I'm afraid. He's a real war horse, is Graham Dot. We always mention his World Championship win, of course we do. But he's actually been involved in three World Championship finals. Well. A real battler. Sometimes even the best need a little bit of positional luck, and Dot was deprived there.
In the end, the delay to the start of the afternoon session on table two was only minimal, around 20 minutes. I can tell you that Martin Gould and Ben Wollaston are now in action over there, commentating Clive Everton. Well, the last thing that Dot wanted there was to make contact with the jaw of the middle pocket, particularly the far jaw. So white here, OK, he's using the rest. It's not easy. But if this red goes in, he's in pretty good scoring territory. Whoa. Well, that's a positional halfway house. Screwed it back too far for the pink. You would think the black is a, an option, but it's a really, really tough pot. Knowing you're going to leave balls if you miss. one well he took the risk is he going to pay the price <laughs> dot can see no positional future in potting the red across the top cushion. His safety wasn't the best though. Caught it a little bit too thick and that's why the cue ball has only just crept over the bulk line. These two are next to each other in the world rankings. Michael White currently 27th, Graham Dot 28th. Tough one to call. Well, well a cracking pot from Graham Dot. Lucky not to get some kind of kiss to hold the cue ball at the business end of the table, but it's going to be a really smelly snooker coming up. Graham dot one. I'll tell you what, folks, well done from Michael White.
Well, the pot would have been a nice bonus, but the the major focus of that shot was weaving the cue ball back into bulk, and that's what White has done. Unlike Graham Dot. Well, fill your boots. Obviously, being able to pot this red past the one closest to the pocket would really help, but there's a, a small margin of error. Well. Now then, he, he really should be off and running. Surprisingly, given their status in the game, this is only their fourth meeting in all competitions. And only their second meeting in the Championship League. Six. Cheers, the only previous time they've crossed paths in this tournament was in Group 4 in 2016. White won the match 3-1, making breaks of 92, 83 and 69. He was also very much on form the last time they played each other in a world ranking event in Belfast, November 2016 in the first round there, White beat Dot 4-0, making breaks of 53, 86 and two 92s. 21. Twenty-two. came into the professional game with a really good reputation, did Michael White. He won what was the equivalent of the IBSF World Amateur Championship at the age of 14. Looks like 2-0, frame ball safely knocked in. needed to put a lot of side on the cue ball there to remain nicely on the reds but it didn't quite bite off the side cushion Thanks, 
defence. Michael White, 67. No century, but more than enough to win the frame. So Michael White helped by runs of 74 in the first frame and 67 right there has taken a 2-0 lead over Graham Dot. Fortunes for both at the moment being reversed from what happened when they played their respective matches in the morning session. White 2, Dot 0. Over on table 2, it looks like being a good start to the match for Martin Gould, almost certainly. 59 up, 51 on now against Ben Wollaston, who needs a couple of snookers. Both of these two on the receiving ends of defeat thus far. Gould lost his first match, 3-1 to Graham Dot. Wollaston, much more recently, lost his first match, 3-1 to Ricky Walden. So already, even though it is relatively early in the group, a big match for both. Gould not quite over the line yet. When he does get there, which you have to think he will do, I'll let you know. Referee Rob Spencer just re-racking the balls, ready for frame three, which Michael White hopes will be the closing frame. The absence of the players just gives me the opportunity to tell you who's into the, the winners group so far. I'll run through it quickly now. We're back. Zhu Yulong won group one. Mark Selby, Group 2. As White plays a terrible break there, catches them far too thick. And he's really lucky not to leave a red to middle. Group 3, Kyron Wilson. Last night, Mark Williams won Group 5. Well. And Ali Carter very impressively won Group 4. So it's a good lineup, but room for two more places. As looked overwhelmingly likely, Gould is now over the line in frame one against Wollaston. 1 0 there. Yesterday, Sorry. Martin Gould played a tremendous brown off two cushions to take the cue ball into the bunch and spread them far and wide. And that wasn't too shabby either from Graham Dot, although queuing yeah. over the red makes life a lot more troublesome.
The dynamic here is that Graham Dot actually remains on table one for the second match of the afternoon session. He takes on Lee Hang after this. And the last thing he wants to do going into that is to be on the receiving end of a 3-0 defeat. Four. Four. Disappointing. Overcut the red. Now the black is the definition of hemmed in by a quartet of reds, but other high value colours are there for the taking. One. As indeed are the bulk colours. The red he wanted to pot, and that's why he put so much side on the, the cue ball, was the red closest to the pink. But the wide just ran a little too far for him to be able to do that. Where the reds are, around the black, it's one of those situations where one perfect shot could completely transform the whole frame and completely open it. Again, as with the the previous red, having to rely on a positional kiss. Nineteen. Could have been better. Okay, the pink still goes to the middle pocket, but he's cutting back into a blind target. Conscious of the, the red that's under his armpit. Michael White, 90. And that's why I wasn't surprised he missed that. It was a tough pot anyway. Let alone with concentration a little divided. Well, the least said about that, the better. What a horrible shot. One.
Now, the way White has played that, I think he thought the red of the four that's farthest to the left would pot. The only thing is, the body language suggests that the cue ball has run slightly too far that, for that to be a viable option. Indeed, so safety, the next best thing. Black and white seven. Well, those reds have been encasing the black all frame. And they continue to, sur to surround it as well. And now Dot beginning to struggle, just as White did, against Lee Hang in his first match. Well, cheers, Michael, thank you. And of course, White senses those vibes as well. He knows his opponent might be there for the taking. Michael White seven. Well, can you believe that? All of the reds scattered. Poor old Graham Dot. Nothing there. A really thin cut, maybe, to the top left hand pocket but that's I think going over the line between risk and stupidity it really is a tough one this he feels entitled to have a pot of course he does and sometimes you allow frustration to get the better of you Did the right thing and played a reasonable shot. any thinner and white would have gone in off and with the red hanging over the middle pocket that could have been really costly so did well there Has Dot spied a gap to take the red between black and pink? Well, the gap was there, the pot not quite accurate enough.
absolutely nowhere near, calling all pockets, and this time, White does not get away with it. One of Dot's great qualities throughout his career has been tenacity. OK, he's 2-0 down, but if he can pull this one out of the fire, he has got the mentality to be able to complete a full-scale comeback. Well, the red purposely chipped away from the side cushion. The only problem is, has it travelled too far for Dot to be able to pot it? I think he, he can just about squeeze it in if he gets good position. But because he almost overcut the blue, the white has travelled a little more than he wanted it, and now this is a really, really tough pot. Very little to aim for. Did really well there, Dot. And he's done well there as well. Just a pity he's not the red past the middle pocket, so the only potting option is down to the green bag. Green bag 27. You can feel the frustration within the former world champion. The only consolation for him... White's nine adrift, so he needs that awkward yellow. Two ways forward here, trying to dislodge it, or where it is, you know, if he can drop nicely, might even contemplate a, a double. I think double it is. Always wide, no position on the green, and the yellow has been left. Two. Well, now Dot really should get off the mark. He's seven in front already, so green, brown, and blue needed. Five. He's not going to miss this. Fourteen. Twenty. Frank. Graham got. 
never discount the chances of Graham Dott. He's a, a fighter when it comes to the Green Bay's game. Never knows when he's beaten. And who knows, in a couple of frames' time, he might not be. Michael White had the chance to make it a 3-0 result in his favour. But the attempted double on the yellow was badly misjudged, badly hit. And that was his last shot of the frame. So, White's lead reduced to 2-1. Looking good for Martin Gould on the other table. As we join it, he's on a break of 30. They've arrived at the last red. So only 35 points on the table. And the good news for Gould is that he's 41 points ahead. So on the verge of taking a 2-0 lead over Ben Wollaston. And things so far in this group not going well for Wollaston, who lost his opening match 3-1 to Ricky Walden. Played some really nice snooker in Group 5, did Ben? Made five centuries, got to the semi-finals. Another day, though. Differing fortunes. The fourth frame. Graham Dodds are back. Dot looking to level the board. Well, how about that? Talk about thin. And position attached as well. Well, the green went in, but nowhere near what he wanted to do, i.e. going into the bunch. And would you believe, he might have come round the table here and Eight. pretty much snookered himself. As he's contemplating what to do here, I can tell you that Martin Gould, as we thought he would, has taken a 2-0 lead over Ben Wollaston. Michael White, eight.
He's a really gritty sort, is Graham Dot. Always has been. I actually mentioned earlier in this match as White plays a really good safety response that White won the equivalent of the IBSF World Amateur Championship when he was 14. Well, Graham Dot in the World Amateur Championship made it to the semi-finals as a teenager himself. And as we've said, limited meetings between these two over the years, but Dot has recorded a victory over White in the past. 6-4 it was in the last 64 of the 2013 International Championship. You might have noticed during the course of this match, and indeed, if you watched when Michael White played Lee Hang earlier today, he's one of those players who wears his heart on his sleeve, and he's very hard on himself. Whoa. Cracking. Not just the pot, but look at the position on the blue. Excellent shot from Dot. He's best of the match so far. But that wasn't his best. The cue ball got away from him. I think he did have a slightly springy bounce off the top cushion as well. So. And even though he shaded and just shaved the, the near jaw there, he just about potted the red. Twenty-eight. As soon as the cue ball hit the side cushion there, Dot was concerned. Wasn't sure whether he'd got the angle on the blue, got any angle on the blue. I think he's just about there. Yeah, it was just off straight. Thirty-four. 
ground dot 34. Well, earlier in the break, as I told you, he caught that near jaw and he just about slid in. But when you catch that much of it, no, sir. Now there, White was thinking about the slim possibility of that being a, a plant and he knew the red was going somewhere in the general vicinity of the pocket, but the main thing was safety. Look at this. Snookered on all reds. Well, I think White was right to tap the table there. To target the lone red and hit it was good from Dot, but he has left it on. It's not easy. But it will part, and if it goes, what a chance. Well. Not a lot of angle on the black. Not surprised it wobbled. But has he left anything? All the reds seem to be covering themselves. The bump of the middle pocket is caught, and I think the the red on the left-hand flank of those four will pot. Well, he's never possessed the greatest amount of Q power, Dot. That would have come in really handy on that shot. <coughs> One. He's a wily old fox, isn't he? Sometimes he doesn't win pretty. But what a warrior. Well, Dot definitely can see the red across the top cushion, but that's no good positionally. It's all a matter of whether he can get past the red that's closest to the white and pop this one. He can. The angle is there on this.
Bom. All about avoiding the black here off the brown. And indeed the green. Five. So Dot already 31 points to the good. Crunch ball of the frame. Finds the target. So the lead now 38, which means if Dot pots this red 12. and the pink, white will need a snooker. Thirty. Just one more red to make sure. And the comeback from 2-0 down 18. to tie the scores will be complete. 20. <coughs> 26. 27. Okay. The break ends at 33, but more than sufficient for Graham Dot to tie the scores. The Scottish Terrier at 2 0 down continued to snap at Michael White's heels, and it's worked out very well for Graham Dot. 2 0 down, but now on level terms at 2 2. Can he really bite and take the decider as well? Over on table two. Every time we come over here, it's looking good for Martin Gould. And in frame three, it's no exception. Three reds left. Gould leads by 34 points. So in the driver's seat to complete a 3-0 win. He's not there yet. But Wollaston has an awful amount of work to do to salvage this frame. We'll give you the scores as and when they happen. By the way, when we have official confirmation of the China Open draw, I will let you know the highlights of that qualifying competition. The big match is coming up. That's being played at Barnsley at the Metrodome, the home of the English Open in October. And those qualifying matches for the China Open will take place from Saturday to Tuesday, inclusive. Designing frame. Michael White's break.
Oh. Strokes it in. A man on a roll, Graham Dot. Now then, is there any value in taking the green? Is there any angle to make it worth it? Well, there wasn't a natural angle, but it's manufactured with the use of pace and with the use of side. Four. Five. And the same thing applied there. Now, Dot has got a really good angle on the blue to get into them. If he makes a full ball contact with the pink, which is at the apex of the bunch, they could go everywhere. You can tell by the fact he's held the cue ball in the middle of the table that that was nearly a full ball contact on the pink. As near as damn it. So. How this match is turned around. In the third frame, Dot was missing a lot. He looked dispirited, but he kept plugging away. As is his character, and it could be a, a big reward. Thirteen. Fourteen. Ideally would have liked no kiss whatsoever on the green. A thinner kiss would have been alright, but that one leaves awkward queuing. And a tough brown. Just feels hin inhibited by the the position of the green. Doesn't have to queue over it. Just slightly distracting. No problem though. Eighteen. I've mentioned before, and at the risk of repetition I'll say so again, when it comes to screwing back these tables are quite a challenge, not the most responsive, and we know that Dot's cue power isn't the best, so you wouldn't think conditions are suited to him. But he's got great stick ability, has the Scot.
25. That was a cracker, not just the pot, but to get on the right side of the blue as well. Well, a red is on. One red. The only problem, Dot is bridging over a number of reds. <coughs> including one that's immediately in front of the cue ball. Needs a high bridge, get those fingers elevated. It's also very difficult as well to, to judge the potting angle when you're coming down from, from that great height. You can also flick on a, a touch of unwanted side and miss the pot that way. Ground off 30. So tough. So Michael White, as he so often does, jumps out of his seat. Now that really was a key shot, what? an absolutely on the nose positional cannon to remove the red from the black and that could reap rich dividends. Eight. The bounce off the side cushion means he's got a Stretch over a little here. Nine. Couldn't make up his mind what to do positionally. 16. Has he been scuppered? Yes. Clearly the bottom red of the two close together won't go past the other red to this top right hand pocket. Well, when he was 2-0 ahead, he had the chance for 3-0, but he misjudged a double on the yellow. Back then, it was a case of hitting the far jaw with the yellow. That time, I suppose, he overcompensated in his mind, and he got nowhere near. Much too narrow. That's okay, the yellow is on, maybe even the brown as well. He 
it's starting to look a little bit bleak for Michael White. Six, thank you. Thank you. Thirteen. Fourteen. into the cue ball too much and now this really is a pressure ball when it should have been the height of simplicity ground up 21 Dot just stands there in disbelief he can't believe his previous positional shot was so far out. Second chance for White. Well. Good pop, but the reaction of the cue ball off the red was a little dead. Michael White won. And in a few moments, this match could be dead. Dot already 34 points to the good. So red, black, red will be enough. One. I once saw him described in a tabloid newspaper as a tenacious tartan terrier and he has been again today just characteristic dot not playing phenomenal snooker by any means but refusing to accept his fate Nine. and pulling a very unlikely result out of the hat The awkwardness of this red does not matter. It's too late to save white. Ground on 16. 50 behind, 35 on. Four snookers needed. And of course this is really good news for Graham Dodd because he won his first match as well, 3-1 against Martin Gould, so more than likely he's going to go into the match against Lee Hang, which is up next here on table one, with two wins out of two. More than likely now, Frank conceded. Michael White concedes in 